All right, welcome to another episode of Dog Talking Coffee with me, Richard Hines. Shocking news. Dogs don't neuter each other in the wild or in, when they live with each other only, right? So a pack of dogs or wolves never neuter each other or spay each other, right? For misbehavior, aggression, you know, whatever behavior th problem, I have personally never seen a dog neuter or spay another dog. That is unnatural. That is a human thing that we came up with thinking we were smart, right? So I've seen it time and time for 20 years in my career. And I had about this week alone, 15 new clients that they neuter or spay the dog and the dogs are worse, right? That's classic. Now, besides the unnatural and common sense that dogs don't neuter each other, right, in the wild, wolves, they would never do that to each other. That is saying also that as human, whoever is saying that to neuter a dog, whether it's your trainer, behaviorist, veterinarian, that is telling you up front they don't know anything about dogs. Right? Dog behavior. Period. I mean, outright common sense. Right? I have never, I'm telling to this day, never seen a dog neuter another dog or spay another dog for them to listen or behave in a pack. If you have, you let me know because that'll be a first <laughs> of all time. <laughs> then I got to rethink things. But since I know 100% that that's never happened, you've never seen it, I've never seen it, nobody's ever seen it. What, where is the common sense in the human world when it comes to this, right? Now, yes, I'm not saying don't neuter if you don't want rampant, you know, breedings going on. That's the only reason I advocate neutering or spaying, right? But when it comes to behavior problems, you don't do it to try to solve that problem because there's more to it than just fixing the dog. And most of the time, it doesn't go away. And that's my whole week, all year, 20 years. The veterinarian told us that fixing him would solve the problem. He'd come, okay, a few dogs calm down. But so what? That's still telling you we had to go fix the dog unnaturally that dogs would never do with each other because the humans in that network that are anything to do with that dog who just got neutered doesn't know how to handle them in their own language, in their own genetics DNA to be able to resolve those behavior problems naturally without having to fix them. Okay. Common sense. That should take you one second to contemplate and then think about. There's nothing to think about. Right? Second thing. Dogs and wolves don't give each other medication. Right? Because a dog is crazy. Too hyper. Right? Anxious. Neurotic. Right? I mean... Dogs, wolves in packs, dogs in packs don't give each other medication to resolve those issues, right? It's unnatural. That's a human-made thing, right? It doesn't exist in wild animals, like dogs, packs, wolves. That does not exist. That's a human-made nonsense, right? Now, understanding that 
99.9% of people in the country or world are going to end up doing these things because there's very few people in the world, trainers, behaviorists, that know anything of how to resolve these things fully. So most people are at a loss. So I don't blame them for falling for this and falling for the veterinarian telling them, that, oh, you know, let's medicate them, let's neuter the trainers, behaviorists, you know, let's try neutering first, let's try medication first. You know, worse comes worse. And if it's aggression, they try all the above and nothing's worked and then they just figure out they got to put them to sleep. Right? So, <laughs> common sense, right? So let me give you a scenario. A dog misbehaves in a wild pack. Wolf, dog. There is no such thing as you know, hey, let's have a timeout. Let's have a conference about this. What if we take his toys, we lock him in his room or his crate? Hey, no, put him in his crate as a timeout. <laughs> like the dog understands that. So, and then you get all the, hey, no, uh-uh, don't do that. Look at me. Sit. Drop it. Hey, come here. Let it go right all that nonsense and craziness that does not work why dogs are a physical species dogs don't talk to each other either like that and go hey nah drop it out hey sit down sit look at me <laughs> right so you have to see things in a natural way if you're going to understand dogs right and be able to really help them that is why my daily life from worldwide I mean I get hundreds of emails a day from every country United States everywhere listen Richard we've tried everything we've tried this trainer these behaviors this that right a veterinarian says and nothing's worked the last resort is put them to sleep come on people right and of course, I get tons of dogs weekly that they've seen six trainers, eight trainers, two behaviors on top of that, the veterinarian says, and I tell them, take them off the medication, we'll fix this, we're going to go to nature, we're going to go back to what dogs do with each other, right? It's physical touch. It's not, ah, uh -uh, no, right? So this is why, too, you'll hear a lot of times, this is... If you're a professional and you've done this long enough, you would hear this all the time. My other dog harasses the other dog, and man, he, he really goes after him for harassing him. If he did, he wouldn't be doing it anymore. So I already know before seeing the scenario, I don't have to look at it to know, that the older dog who's being aggravated is going, rawr, rawr, rawr and warning and threatening without actually grabbing and shaking them and giving them a discipline. So it goes on and on and on. And the one who's taunting always runs in and goes, rawr, rawr, rawr. and the moment they wait for a reaction, they jump out and they run away. And they come back and, rawr, 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 and they taunt the dog because it's fun to do. And getting the reaction out of the other dog who doesn't like it, knowing it's all a bluff, that they won't be shaken in the head for it or be caught. They can run quick away and then just come back in and taunt the dog again without ever getting disciplined, right? But that doesn't happen in a pack of dogs with many that have a true leader attached in that pack, right? There will be disciplinary consequences physically, quickly, right? No playing around, no bluffing. It's not, ah, uh -uh, no, hey, look at me, ah, uh ah, -uh. right? It's, what, Wait. right in the neck? and we're done and over no harm dogs not devastated it is what it is they were meant for physical touch never to be verbally talked to hence every day of my life all the aggression cases every day of my life behavior problems that I deal with and go to I always hear this one no but I'm tough on him 
verbally because the dog don't care about that. Right? That's why I'm here, because the dog keeps doing it, doing it, doing it. Right? Humans think that if they communicate verbally to a dog, the dog understands that and that they can get their way with them eventually by convincing the dog or talking to him humanly. When dogs don't talk to each other and go, look at me, hey, sit, hey, come here, over here, hey, drop it, let it go, go to your room. Right? I mean, it's all common sense stuff, people. That is why when people come to an aggression problem so fast, I'm known for this to get it done, right? Just a few I put up. The one girl's already had four trainers throughout the United States. She absolutely hated dogs for the last two years, two and a half years. I went through four different trainers um, all over Florida, in North Carolina, and absolutely nothing worked. So the four methods I tried were all positive reinforcement and they would always tell me, you know, have treats out, the ham, you know, have the chicken out and that'll make her, that'll make her be fine. Just walk her around dog parks and she'll eventually get used to it. You know, I never really gave e-collars a chance. I thought, you know, that's not for me. But after this, I mean, Richard's knowledge about it, it, you can't do it any other way. It doesn't work. This is the last trainer I will ever need because the change I have seen is incredible. It took, I'd say, what, two days to see a drastic change. Everyone that has seen, like known Callie since the beginning, has seen this change and they're absolutely in shock. We thought it could never happen. And in two classes, two hours, I got the dog to stop going after and, and biting dogs and hunting to being in a dog park playing with them again. Two hours. That's all it took me. These two pit bulls. Two classes means two hours. Right? And here we go. We have these two dogs loving each other, licking each other's mouth again, back to harmony. It's him. Right, that's it, that's it. That's it. Uh, right? So right there, he's gonna licky lick. And then just, you know, right, good. She's gonna try to lick him. That's She's awesome. She's licking pumpkin in his mouth. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Pumpkin's like, what a tongue. <laughs> I mean, these are not just special cases for me. This is on and on and on and on and on and on because I understand dogs. I don't, I'm not delusional like most professionals that we have in the industry that all science and this and that, now we give positive, we give treats, we do that, right? I have never seen dogs give each other treats in the wild for anything, right? I've never seen a dog go, sit, hey, look at me, good, and treat a dog with treats for them to behave. Never seen that, never will see that, you will never either, right? I mean, so we have completely lost our minds, right? And are completely living in a delusional world when it comes to living with dogs and how to help them live in balance, right? I mean, this is my forte, people, right? This is, everybody comes to me worldwide, right? They've tried everything. One hour with me, two hours with me, we're gonna get right back to where they were supposed to be right and not avoid what most people think is inhumane or abuse right there's no such thing in my system that's why we get these dogs back to licking each other in the mouths again right being able to play with dogs again after they were completely neurotic and could not have a dog go near them there's a proven system i've done everything in dog training i've mastered everything i'm a grand master at dog behavior. It's completely two different species and a dog living with us as human species 
right, that has a completely different set of needs and a different way of seeing life genetically being put on the planet, different. Different outlook, different thoughts, different feelings. Nothing's the same, right? So we have such confusion and we've done such a disservice to dogs, you know, by living with them and treating them and thinking also that dogs were meant to be for humans, right? This is a biggie. Everybody thinks that every litter of dogs that was plopped onto this planet, every puppy that's born is meant to go to a human, right? That every puppy and dog that was put here on the earth was meant for human consumption and to live in a human home, right? That they're so domesticated that they were meant to live with us. They were put on the planet for us, right? This is actually how we think and believe that they couldn't live on their own without us. So again, we go back to common sense, right? Dogs don't neuter and spay each other. Wolves don't neuter and spay each other for a dog to behave. Wild dogs don't do it either. They, wild wolves and dogs, don't give each other medication to calm them down and get them right, to try to get them to behave in the human world. Right, there's no treats and treat training to get them to behave and listen and, you know, I mean, this is all common sense. We have not advanced, right, like we think we have. Humans think that because technology has come so far and, you know, all these new inventions that we've advanced, you know, in technology and, and all these different kind of things that we've come so far with what we know and knowledge and through science and dog is still dog, right? That has not changed. Yes, they've been more domesticated since the start of it all, but they are not domesticated to the point that they are human and that their needs are the same as ours, right? I mean, it's so crazy. And for anybody out there sitting listening to this to think that this is crazy, this is how crazy we've gotten. That common sense doesn't even come to you. There's a certain way of thinking about things and how people feel about dogs that they don't want to let go of that fantasy about that, right? It's a crazy world we live in right now, and it just does a disservice to dogs, right? My passion in life, what makes me happy, is to see dogs that were going to be put to sleep, which is my every day, and dogs that have been through so many trainers and behaviorists and everything, and to see them come together and be normal and, and play again, right? That is the ultimate when you do this for a living. But there's very, I'm taught, I don't even know if you could find anybody in your area in the country, right, that could actually get you to that point. Like I have here on my videos with the dogs I work with. Now, I'm just going to show you this one little clip as just an example, right? I've never used this clip before. I've had it probably now on my computer for two years. And I've said in the other videos that pressure is the key, right? Because dogs bite dogs to discipline and keep harmony. It's not a warning game and that's all they do, right? Dogs take things seriously impacts and wolves because there has been a bite it's not a bluff or else none of the other dogs or wolves would respect the head dog or fear the disciplinary acts not to get out of control if it was all a bluff it's just like human right you bluff you bluff you say you talk nobody respects you now for that in dog world wolf world they take care of that very quickly 
and they make it clear, they have no remorse for correcting you. Right? Physical correction is going to come in that neck, and that's what it was for, for dogs and wolves. Wham! Mm, shake, and they get it, and we just got to get it in check, right? No harm, no foul, all is well. Dog who got checks, not devastated. They just understand now there's no, they're not going to be able to get away with those things and have bluffing happening. So they respect the pack. They respect their place and happy to be within and be a part of everything, a working component, right? Their place in the pack, which each one has their own place in that pack, right? All personalities are different. They're not all the same. So that's just how that goes. So there is no bluffing. It's wham, shake, we got it. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> All's well, no more of that. Okay, so this clip here I'm going to show you. This was a case that this client called me, has an American Bulldog. This one here, the dark brindle one, is eight years old. They've had her ever since a puppy. They brought this new one in, Rescue, the light tan one here, to give her something to play with of her own because she's like a human, right? She lays around all day, she has a couch of her own, right? She has an armchair of her own. She's the laziest dog right doesn't want to walk doesn't want to do anything doesn't listen you ask for anything she doesn't listen the humans have spoiled her so badly that she's lost herself as dog right so they thought bringing this new guy in would give her something to be a dog again and liven her up because they were afraid that she looks like she's starting to tank and tank quickly right aging faster so they were trying to give her new life so when they brought this guy in because she has no social skills and she's been humanized for eight years she wants nothing to do with this guy won't be near him he goes in the room she's in she leaves and she goes to put herself in another room she'll never be in the same room as him so this two days within them having this dog every time he goes near her and wants to play with her engage with her she just takes off and goes and puts herself in a room now she happened to put herself on the son's bed who's 14. she loves to get in there and cuddle with him right so she just went and planted herself like, I'm going to disengage and I'm going to go plant myself next to my guy. And that's that, leave me alone. So the young guy comes into the room and goes and wants to put his feet up on the bed. She jumps over the 14-year-old and attacks the new guy. The 14-year-old jumps up and goes to try to break him up because now it was on. He gets bit in the head, the 14-year-old boy, with teeth holes all through his head from the dog. The 8-year-old grabbed him by the head and got him in the head and crushed, thinking it was the other dog. So, of course, he had to go to the hospital, all the puncture wounds in his head. So, now they just won't be near each other because the young guy knows if he gets in her space, the fight's going to be on. So, good thing he's avoiding, right? He, he understands not to tamper and mess around with that. He wants no conflict with it. So, I do a class of my normal techniques when it comes to aggression. Better, she was kind of tolerating him. So, second class, the owner says, look, definitely if he comes around her, she's tolerating him more. But 
Are they ever going to like each other? Are they ever going to play with each other? So, second class, now I had to pick something to put pressure on her. Right? Because she still doesn't like him, doesn't want to play with him. She'll let him sniff now a little more, but then she walks away again. She just goes away. So, I said, let's try something. So, I put pressure on her doing something else, a technique. And all of a sudden, he started coming to her and they were licking each other in the mouths. Now it's a start. Perfect. I gave them homework of putting pressure on her during the week. Third class, I come back. So this video footage here is from the owner's phone that I'm going to show you now. As I walk in the house, she says to me, listen, I want to show you something before we even start the class. Look at this of what's happening after you were here the last time. This is crazy, right? So here I watch this footage of what she's showing me on her phone. Wow. So she goes, so the crazy thing is, the next day after you left and you put pressure on her, eight times a day now she comes out from where she is in a room, looks for the young guy, and they play like this eight times a day and she's the one coming to seek him now to play. This goes on all day long now, right? The owners are blown away by what one exercise did of pressure to make her come out of her shell to come and find this guy and play with him when she wanted nothing to do with him, right? Would not go near him, wouldn't let him be in the same room, would walk away and take off. Wouldn't let him smell her, wouldn't let, now about eight times a day, every day, she comes out and looks to play with him, right? I mean, that is unbelievable, right? I mean, that is such beautiful, such a beautiful thing to watch and see. So when she showed me that video, I was so happy because I gambled on the exercise that I did with her that I never do with any other dog in aggression. I just picked one thing that I've, I've never done before and just thought that would work. And the next day she's doing this and playing with him out of nowhere and now we got what the owner wanted was them to be a unit and cohesive and play with each other, not just avoid each other all over the place and live like it's two separate dogs living. So. It's the beauty of pressure when you know how to do it properly and bring a dog's nature out, right? Because they, they were born and genetically made for pressure or else I wouldn't do it, right? And we wouldn't get the results like this if it wasn't natural. So the pressure that we put is not abusive. It's not devastating to the dog because if that was the case, the dog wouldn't want to come out and play with the other dog, right? We didn't do any, you know, help if we put too much pressure and we did it incorrectly where we make the dog wilt, right? So there's an art to this game. And again, I picked an exercise that I had never done before in 20 years. It just came to me. And I picked a moment of doing something in pressure that she gave me at that moment that I just went with it. And right away, here we go, and now they're the best of friends. After one pressure moment. Right, so, and I never saw them again. 
right? We were supposed to have eight to 12 classes and we had three and that was it, right? They called us six months, eight months later to say everything was great, perfect, everything's fantastic, they love each other, thank you very much. You saved our lives, you know. Humans just don't know enough about dogs, even though everybody thinks they do, right? Trainers think they know dogs, behaviorists think they know dogs, veterinarians think they know dogs, and it's actually the quite sad opposite. Or else they'd be able to help all dogs and never say to neuter, give medication, treats, and none of it worked, now we gotta put them to sleep. Because the wrong methods for the species have been done and incorporated that does not work for the dog species if you know anything about dogs, right? So, I just wanted to put that out there because we really need to start shaking the dog world up and the human world up about the reality if we really care about dogs and we really love dogs like we all think we do and say we do. Well, I really do and I've done my best to make sure that I have found the truth and the methods to really make things work and help them. Not go off of how I feel as a human to what that method does. That is a big mistake and that is wrong to dogs, right? So, now that I have got that out and vented <laughs> a little bit, I just wanted to give everybody something common sense to think about. So, that's that. Till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer.